Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Karen, episode 49, Where Are All the Energetic Olympians? Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to up your spiritual alignment, your manifestation game, using that unified will that we talked about last week, using the practical magic we talked about two weeks before, and really and truly becoming a disciplined enough being to see yourself as an Olympic athlete of energetics, a master at energy alchemy, a master of emotional and psychic alchemy, taking the the triggers of your life and choosing the sensation in your body as a way to move yourself forward instead of a way to stonewall or hold your ground or uh, shame other people or try to get other people in your camp. It has nothing to do with other people. This, this entire journey of life is between you and source, you and God, you and your dragons. And it literally doesn't matter what other people say about you, what other people think about you, what people who have had decades and decades of spiritual learnings say to you when you've only been on this path for three months or six months or two years or five years, and you have people who've been doing this for 25, 30 years telling you why you're wrong, it doesn't matter. We're not playing the same energetics game that those who were playing 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago we're even playing. Remember a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about how when you line up, you get into your, uh, uh, some people call it their destiny vortex or the dragon's gateway or just in that alignment, that, that chakra column, that, that energy of light column that we connect to. When you're in there, when you're in alignment with your highest timeline, when you are playing the game full out for the ascension of your soul and nobody else, that's when you're being an energetic Olympian. That supreme, like, unwavering focus, right? Relentless focus and dif- discipline. Unwavering faith. Radical trust. Supreme integrity. Impeccable standards. So why am I using the term Olympian instead of something else? Well, there's a few reasons, so I wanted to talk about that. But first, let's do a little check-in, shall we? So let's do a check-in with manifestation. I talked about two weeks ago on Practical Magic when we were talking about the process, the step-by-step process of how to create miracles in your life. The first one was to know that you are worthy of them, to expect miracles, to know your life is already miraculous. The second one is to really allow the dream to be as big as you want it to be. The third being to feel into the vibration of what it is that you want to hold and feel the vibration of what it's going to be like when your manifestation is here. And the fourth one is just to like literally expect it to happen. Know that you've weaved the web, you've taken the actions necessary for it to happen and therefore it will. So during that live stream where I was explaining that, I made a a statement, a decree, because my laptop kept dying, if we remember, right? It kept overheating. It was a problem I realized I had was this overheating problem with my laptop. The room that I'm in is the hottest room in the house. It's an east-facing window, so like right now it's getting slammed by the sun where I would normally be sitting. So it's overheating, and it's a used laptop. It's like a, a laptop that my husband was using. I've only ever had Hi from the Philippines and the UK. Yay! Hi, everyone. I've only ever had used laptops or cheap laptops or like, you know, in in college, I think that I spent some of my FAFSA money on like a $600 laptop and that was a huge deal. And then it got stolen from my car. So I've never had like a really nice new laptop that was just mine that I didn't have to have my husband get for me from work or anything like that. And I made a decree that I was going to have that laptop purchased by today. Sunday morning, everyone's gaming, everyone's using the internet everywhere. You didn't used to be, everyone used to be good church. So I live in Utah and a really good time to be on the internet in Utah is on Sunday mornings when all the Mormons are at church, but they're all on their Zoom meetings right now. So that's what I also figured out is that the broadband like internet around here is getting used the F up 
by all of the people being on their church meetings on Zoom. And so even though I have wireless, like I'm fighting all of the neighbors who are all on the same Zoom call because all of them, like the way that the churches are set up around here for the LDS wards, if you don't know, is like literally by your neighborhood. So your street address dictates which ward you're supposed to go to. So if everyone in this neighborhood are supposed to be on like a church call at 10 o'clock and I don't know that because I'm not LDS like I'm fighting the bandwidth so pray that we have a clear connection <laughs> and we'll move forward so um yeah so I just wanted to check in with the with the fact that the manifestation did happen I was able to create the money five days later the money started coming in I had the money fully in sales within one week I had to wait a couple days for it to actually hit my account and was able to purchase the laptop and then within eight hours of purchasing the laptop i made my investment back full like more than my investment back so for those of you who say that this doesn't work and guys that was four sessions i made it back in four sessions because i decided that it was time to finally go all in fully believe in my gifts finally talk the talk and walk the walk that so many of my clients do i have clients that charge a thousand dollars two thousand dollars an hour and i was sitting around charging 150 like it was time for me to step in to who i am meant to be and the fact that i am booked through you know i have bookings like there's still a few openings in july but i'm already booking out to august is all the proof i need that what i'm doing is in alignment and all I, what i'm doing is to the packages right now is just adding a little bit of extra support on the end like some check-ins and some surveys and i really want to start um, using this inv invocations as a way to like track and have like a survey at the beginning and have a survey at the end. That's what a coach would do, right? So let's jump into the Olympics, the Olympics. If you are a wee little four year old and you want to be a gymnast and your mom signs you up for gymnastic class, you don't know this, but your mom is spending like anywhere from 30 to $50 a class for you to be in there for, you know, an hour a week. By the time you're in, you're eight years old and you're still in gymnastics, your mom is spending 250 to $400 a month to have you in gymnastics. If you keep going and you're 12 years old and you start getting into some of those junior Olympic trainings, your mom and dad are spending around $1,000 a month to have you in those classes. And by the time you get onto an actual Olympic team, your parents have to pay the coach. And while Olympic coaches only make about $50,000 a year on average, let's not assume you're gonna be an Olympian right now. Cause I, I was trying to show that Olympic coaches made a fuck ton of money. But do you know who does make a fuck ton of money? NFL players. Yeah, National Football League here in America. So the highest paid coach in America is Bill Belichick, the head coach of the New England Patriots. And he makes $12 million per year. That's a million dollars a month. And he's not working every single month because we have seasons, right? The highest paid athlete in the NFL was until he retired Tom Brady the quarterback of the New England Patriots he makes 15 million dollars per year so he's making more than a million dollars per season and he's definitely not working every single month of the year because he's not even like really planning the same way the coach might be I don't like football. I don't really agree with the sport. There's a whole lot of stuff that they've been able to prove with the tackles and like brain injuries and all this stuff. But these men are making a ridiculous amount of money. Let's not even talk about the fact that they're white men on the on the New England Patriots because that could be a whole other fucking rabbit hole we go down. How much money do you think Tom Brady's parents had spent on training for him to be in the NFL, right? How many uniforms did they did they so i don't want to just like focus on the money part i want to change this to an energetic exchange part okay 
So if we just go with belief that all of us have installed, that money is just energy, it doesn't do any good if it's just sitting around as paper, if you just have a bunch of money sitting in underneath your mattress or sitting in the bank account, you're not really doing anything with it, okay? I just was using the money example to show that where your focus goes, the money really can flow. You can be the coach and make a ton of money, with only $3 million less than the athlete that you're coaching right? Then the athlete that is being coached can make all this money more than the coaches. And like Tom Brady will never spend the amount of money that he made. But that's, that's not the point. The point is, is that we need to start treating our own lives, own energetics, the way that someone like Tom Brady or Olympic athletes or the like, and I know that Olympic athletes don't get paid a lot either, guys. Like, I understand this. I did do my research. They actually end up having a lot of them to pay to be on the Olympic team. But to get there, their parents have to pay a whole lot of money to even, like, get the training. And if they don't pay that, they had to go find it. Like, they go find it in scholarships. They go find it in grants. They go find it in community programs that have that sort of outreach where some little lady with a ton of money, like Tom Brady's grandma, is giving money to the community center, right? It's how you have so many stories like Odell Beckham Jr. and some of these, um, you know, these these African American and Polynesian, not white, okay, everyone who's not fucking white, let's be honest, people who end up on these, uh, these these sports teams and end up making a lot of money maybe didn't spend a lot of money to get there but they put in a lot of energy right you, these are people that are like i had to be on the bus for two hours on my way to practice because it was out of the way like, they tell their story as to how they got to where they're going and they're putting in all this energy and all this time so i don't care if you're using it as money or you want to think of it as energy exchange i just want you to think about the relentless focus and discipline it takes for a professional athlete an, an Olympian or a professional athlete, whichever one resonates best for you, because the, it's physically rigorous, okay? That's the part that why I'm not going to use, like, another another profession other than sports is because spiritual, energetic maintenance has a very physical component to it and is a very physically rigorous exercise, it's an exercise in that will, in the ability to have that unified will. And I have literally been teaching you guys all month long how to do that. Starting even back in June when we started talking about dismantling the patriarchy, the internal one, right? The things that start telling us that we can't do things and can't be someone. Usually, I find, because so many of us have a sports trauma. Like, not that you got injured in sports, but, but you had an asshole coach at some point that told you you weren't good enough. Or maybe you had one of those parents that was, like, one of those coachy parents from the side that's like, come on, little Johnny, you got it. And then goes and yells at, why didn't you put little Johnny on first? Little Johnny could have done it. Like, if that was your mom, a lot of people don't like the sports realm. Like, it's hard for them to even exercise because they have a bad experience with sports and discipline and physical rigorous training. I got my power shirt on today. This is my shirt that says, I'm mostly peace, love, and light, and a little don't give a fuck, because that's how I feel about today. Um, it's also the first day of the Galactic New Year, so we're going to talk about that for a second as well. Um, so think about that. Just like for a second while I talk about the Galactic New Year, I just want you to run through your body. Like, can you think of any traumas that you can remember because of sports? Can you think of any time that you didn't want to be disciplined? And it might not be sports. Like, you might have that piano teacher that you hated, or maybe it was, um, a different hobby that you really wanted to do. You wanted to be really, really the, like the best at it, but somebody, some external force made you question the validity of that desire versus Olympians. Um, like one thing that's for sure, for sure, for sure, from every single solitary sports interview that I've watched ever, there's at least one person, one person outside of the athlete himself that believed in the athlete or herself, right? 
the mom, the aunt, the sister, the whoever, the person that always drove them or who showed up or who paid, right? So Olympic athletes, professional sports players do not ever, 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 motherfucking ever get there by themselves. Okay, there's not a single one that you will ever find that says that they never once took a, like, they never went to a basketball game. They never had a coach. They never had a trainer. They never, like, they just walked in one day and were like, yeah, I'm the best skier on the planet and won a gold medal. That shit doesn't happen. So for those of you out there like, oh, I can just master this myself. Oh, there's enough books for me to read. Oh, I can skate. Like, there's a reason why I compare this. Like, are you playing a pickup game of soccer in the park? Or are you a motherfucking energetic Olympian? Because I'm only here to work with energetic Olympians and everyone else. Honestly, there are hundreds of thousands of other people out there on the planet happy to teach you how to play soccer and how to play a pickup game. Maybe even a rec game. Maybe even get yourself on like one of those competition teams. But if you're ready to be an Olympian, then stick around. And I can tell you the reason why you're feeling a little bit of sauciness and electricity, let's get into this galactic new year. So yesterday was the day without time, the day outside of time where the Mayan calendar is resetting. Today is the day that Sirius rose with the sun, resetting our galactic year. Year, and today is the first day of the year of the blue storm. And the mantra for that is polarizing to catalyze. And, oh shit, I like to memorize it and now it's gone. It's gone because of how many times I had to restart it. That's like the biggest thing you have to realize. Like this whole year, starting today until June 24th, 25th of next year, is all about the micro and macro the things going on in your internal life blowing the fuck up in your external life all those little tiny pieces that you think that you have dealt with coming back up again because it's the end of the nine year cycle from when the 2012 portal began of the fourth the fourth dimensional like holding space essentially we've been in as we're creating the foundation for the ascension and new earth which will actually be in 2032 but this was the beginning of like the nine-year cycle and then the next nine-year cycle is going to be a lot more of the like building like actual building so what it's been for the last nine years or the last eight years and now we're going into the ninth year of it is really this idea of like writing the blue, remembering the blueprints, right? We already know how this is supposed to work. We were here as as Atlanteans. It was just that when it, we were here as Atlanteans, we were infiltrated by the margins. We weren't able to hold our integrity. We weren't able to hold the standards of living necessary for us to continue without getting sucked down into the more negative, like the denser vibrations of lack and scarcity. So we we encoded into our DNA this this governor that I was talking about earlier this week that stops us from tapping into our magic. And there are so many people who think that they hit that governor and then that's it and they see anyone above it and they're like, you're gaslighting, you're bypassing, you don't fucking get it, you don't actually believe in what you're doing, you're a poser, you're a fraud. And it's because they literally can't see above this governor. They've decided that we can only reach a certain amount of magic. You can only have a certain amount of bliss. You can only have a certain amount of wealth. You can only have those things if you're going to be in service. If you're going to be in service, you have to stay down here. And anyone above here is a greedy bitch and a greedy asshole and doesn't have anybody's pure love at heart, doesn't know how to tap into unconditional love. And it's because they're being trapped and tricked by the governor that we installed in our DNA when Atlantis fell. And it's time to take that shit off. Okay, yeah, upper limit problem. Thank you. If you've ever read The Big Leap, that's exactly what it is. But this is for your magic. Okay? So, Gay Hendrix is great at talking about the, the love and the wealth, success, creative flow, and, like, physical, like, just contentment. And he kind of touches on the spirit stuff. I'm talking about fucking magic. Like, telepathy, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance, astral projection, like not like 
full on project, like not even astral projection, like blinking, <laughs> by locating, um, shape shifting, all of these things going off planet, all of these things are what the superconscious pioneers what we're talking about. We're not interested in the shit you guys were learning about in the 90s and early 2000s. It's fucking boring. We're trying to pull in the new stuff. We don't care that we look like we're going super fast because time is relative. And it doesn't matter, like I said, if you have a coach or someone, a mentor in your life that's coming up saying, well, it took me 30 years, blah, blah, blah. Time is relative. You can install and decide these beliefs right fucking now and tomorrow become a millionaire. That would be a lot of cleaning. It would be super fucking cool if I ever met anyone that went from zero dollars to a millionaire. But it's possible. We know that anything is possible the second we think it, it exists in the quantum realm. We've been raised on Star Trek. We've been raised on quantum physics. We've been raised to believe the unimaginable is possible because every fucking day they're blowing our minds with what they're releasing. We don't have the stop gaps of the older generations. We just don't. We are more removed from the Great Depression, therefore we don't have the same epigenetic coding on our DNA. It's not a better than, it's a fucking fact. That's it. It's just a fact. It's a fact that those of us who started waking up in 2017 and 2018 have quantum jumped to levels even past people who were waking up in 2012 or who were waking up in the 90s. Because we chose to be here at this time and to be able to remember our lessons that fast because so many people paved the way by being the crazy people, by being quiet in little corners and having their little book clubs and doing their rituals. All of the work that those who went before us have done have cleared the pathway for us to be able to go so fast. It's just like, it's just that now we need to show others that it's safe to get on here. Remember the post I did the other day about how they thought that uh, the human body would explode if we went over 30 miles an hour. So they like put that as like a cap on the steam engine train. So think about the first little grandma that's like, grandson's like, come on, grandma, we're going to go 60 miles an hour in this train. And she's like, oh my God, no, we're going to blow up. And he, she gets on the train, and she doesn't blow up. Like, that's what we have to do. Showing quantum timelines, showing how to train as energetic Olympians to some of those who have been doing very specific practices, spending hours a day in meditation, hours a day doing their rituals. It can be just as confusing as getting on a train or when you switch from, a, you know, a corded phone to a, a cell phone beginning. But, like, now that the touch screen, do you remember a couple of years ago, like, when you would walk by and you're like, oh, look at that cute grandma with her first iPhone. And now, like, grandma's doing shit with her iPhone that you're like, Girl, grandma, how'd you do that? I want to know how. Right? Anybody? Anybody else experiencing that? So, energetic Olympians, we... There, there are really five things, five things I want you to really take away, and I've kind of been talking about them and haven't really, like, listed them. The first thing is that we take our daily disciplines, we eat, breathe, sleep this. There isn't, like, a certain time of day dedicated to our spiritual disciplines. It's all day and all night. We know that the lucid dream of sleep, like, that the sleep is just a thinner dream and that the waking dream is just more dense, but we're still just fucking dreaming. Right, and we can dream whatever dream we want. We can dream that this is total hell, like as uh, the famous quote goes: "The human mind is a wonderful place, can make a hell, heaven, a hell out of heaven, and heaven out of hell." I don't remember how it goes exactly, but something like that. That's that's what we do all fucking day long. And if we find ourselves slipping into hell, we choose heaven on earth again. And if we fall, find ourselves falling into old belief patterns, we whip ourselves back into shape. We are our own trainer once we get to this point in many ways, but we always have a mentor. We always have someone else guiding us. We always have people that we're learning from. We're always looking for ways to expand, to harness our craft more. So the first thing is really like, this is what we do all day long. We don't think out or do anything other than checking our mindset, getting back into that amazing spiritual energetic space so that we can command miracles because we can't command miracles if we don't have a unified will and we can't have a unified will if we're being sloppy with our energetics. The second thing 
is knowing that it's a fucking dream. So just dream whatever you want and realize that as soon as this dream ends for you, everyone else disappears anyway. So what they have to say doesn't fucking matter, which is number three. Other people don't matter. So dream whatever dream you want. One. One. <laughs> this is a discipline. All day, every day, there is no stopping. Two. It's all a dream. So dream whatever fucking dream you want to dream. You want to dream a nightmare, that's your choice. You want to dream that you are a trillionaire and an actual dragon and can psychically connect to anyone on the planet and talk to aliens and two people have passed on and be a trillionaire and all of the, I think I said trillionaire already, and so, oh, and end world hunger and end poverty and make sure that every child on the planet knows how to read and knows that everyone has access to growth mindset and all that stuff. That's the dream you want to live. Live that dream. It's a fun dream to live. It's the one I hang out in. It's a really good time. And it doesn't fucking matter what other people think at all. At all. We were talking about Bill Belichick and Tom Brady earlier. Do you think either of them give a flying fuck that a good chunk of American and other people in this world don't like them? Do you think that the girls who won the gold medal on the U.S. Olympic team gave a flying fuck about all of the other bitchy little gymnasts that probably talked all sort of shit on them in the background after they won a gold medal as like the youngest team ever do so? No, they didn't give a shit. And even those who do end up caring, like Taylor Swift talks about her and her entire uh, her entire documentary, if you've never seen it, someone who's here to be here and to use their voice and to really hone their craft and share their gifts those lessons and fucking run with them okay they're going to run with them they're going to out that's why i posted the other day that i love being triggered i love it when something triggers me because it doesn't happen very often anymore so when it does i'm like mm, ooh, ooh, this is sour ooh, spicy i don't i don't i don't know if i want to eat it but but i think i'm gonna learn something if i eat it so okay mm. Oh, no, no. I don't. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, I can like this pepper. I decide what the sensation feels like in my body at every, any given time. I learned this as someone who was a member of the, you might have never heard of it, but the orgasmic birth movement. My daughter, that I'm always talking about, how I, I birthed her unassisted, was absolutely the most orgasmic experience of my life to that point. Um. <laughs> some things have happened but yeah i would i would never ever 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 describe her birth as painful yeah some pressure but it was blissful it was powerful it was pleasurable i would definitely consider it an orgasm like pushing her out that feeling that release the bliss the gratitude everything that washed over me afterwards absolutely would be in a upper feeling compared to like my first son they ended up having an epidural and i was terrified and it was closing down i had 150 micro fractures in my pelvis i was diagnosed with fibromyalgia like, like six months later had ptsd from the experience so when i went to have my second son at the hospital i was like fuck no i'll have this baby at home i am not birthing in a hospital i'm not going through that conveyor belt system again that that would be considered a trigger that would be considered a lesson i learned now it doesn't always show up that big but when I declared to you guys I was going to get a laptop in two weeks and I didn't, I had barely enough money to pay my business expenses because I was in a funky place trying to figure out what the hell was going on with me energetically. I had no idea how I was going to do that. And yet I made the decree, I made the decision, I took the terrifying actions, I increased my prices, I brought back uh, an offer I hadn't had in a couple of months, I revamped the whole thing and within four four appointments made enough money to not only buy a new laptop but also bought a new phones so that this whole freezing shit doesn't happen was able to pay off my expenses for this retreat i'm going to in two weeks and still have plenty of money left over for all of my expenses and like to pay myself personally i've made more money in the last three weeks since i've been taking the time to teach you guys how to do stuff and stepping into it than i have in the whole rest of my business Are you starting to comprehend what I mean by a fucking Olympian? You don't stop. You can't stop. There is no off 
switch anymore. When you're sleeping, you're sleeping and you're dreaming about it. So that would be, I guess, the fourth thing. The fourth thing really is can't stop, won't stop. Like, nothing matters but your dream. Nothing matters. You start slipping out of it, you do whatever it takes no matter what. You go and you do your meditation, you do your yoga, you do your hiking, you, you eat vegan, you don't have alcohol, whatever it is for you. That's why I love bespoke dragon invocations. It's why I offer them with these follow-ups and with ways to check in with you and give you a protocol afterwards. Because it's all about a training regimen. That's what you're really getting. I'm actually going through and like reworking the sales page so that you so that more people can understand the beginning is a one hour session and what I give you is a training regimen to get your whole body calibrated and ready to install spiritual software that I'm not giving you. Your spiritual entourage is waiting for you to be at a level to believe and to know that you're ready to hold these things and they just want to throw gifts at you, shower gifts on you, right? If the universe is here to abundantly provide for us, how can we say that there's such a thing as greed? How can we call anyone greedy and also in the same breath say, but the universe uh, provides unlimited resources for me? Those are fucking hypocritical statements, and yet they are belief systems. This is what I work with, guys. The amount of data that is backed up in the hard drives of so many spiritual entrepreneurs, of so many thought leaders, so many super conscious leaders that could be living life more blissfully, more prosperously, more in a life of creative flow, making massive change in mainstream areas, infiltrating other lines of work such as the corporate world and Fortune 1000 companies and biotech and much more of the sciencey, like physical sciencey world. They don't do it because there's this old program running that still hasn't been cleared out because of how many years it's been running. This belief that if you're in service, you can't charge. And if you're charging, you must be a greedy asshole. They literally print money. I don't know if this is a shock to you, but they just go like this into a computer and press go and it like money does grow on tree. It's it literally just appears out of thin air in a computer system that some dude programs. That's where money comes from in in the 21st century. I, I don't know if you know this, but like that's how they've been able to just like create these bailouts and all that shit. They just like, oh, we're going to. Yeah, just 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 make more money. And what is going to be the economic fallout of that? I don't fucking know. What I do know is that I better figure out a way to become materialistically self-sustaining because this physical body of mine still needs material food and material water and a material place to live. I still need to take care of these lower chakras. So if the way that I do that is pulling in my spiritual gifts from up above and I teach other people how to do that, how to commune with dragons, how to speak to aliens, how to tell the future, how to be able to guarantee that their life is the highest possible timeline, I guarantee that because I know it within myself that that's what I'm living, even when I have days that trigger the fuck out of me. I know it because I choose it. So the fifth thing would that be that, like you're choosing the lifestyle of an energetic Olympian. That's it. You choose it every fucking day. You can quit today, but you can't quit tomorrow. What got you here sure as fuck isn't going to get you there, so you better have number two down pat and know what your dream is. If I didn't know and have a dream that I was going to be the world's first trillionaire and be the world's first, not the world's, but America's, the U.S. first female president, and that I was going to be 35 when I did that, I have no idea what my life would be different. That's the timeline. That's what I line up with. If I start to feel shaky or nauseous or not, if I start feeling any ascension symptoms at all, at all, any ascension, headaches, extreme fatigue, nausea, cravings, anything like that, I know that I'm not in alignment with my highest timeline and I snap back into it. I use my tools. I connect to my dragon's gateway. I connect to my higher heart. I connect to the heart of Sophia. I connect to the heart of Gaia. I get in alignment. I choose my timeline again because it is this fluid and especially right now, yesterday being the day out of time and today being the first day of the galactic new year, today is the day to make a decree. Today is the day to make a choice. What timeline are you choosing so that you can feel the resonance in your body right here, right now, and then know that when you're not 
feeling the way you feel right here right now you're not in alignment then you have ways you have a way to recalibrate again you get a recording of the bespoke dragon invocations for this exact effing reason so that you have a freak out with your husband and you can go into the closet and put your headphones on and reconnect to yourself as dragon over a three or five minute video or like the clip and be recalibrated to your highest timeline because that's the intention that we set when we do the invocations. Energetic Olympians have, like regular Olympians have that. They have, like go, there's a, oh, I'm going to post it now. I can post it. I'm going to clip. <laughs> yes, 100 million seems so reachable. Fuck yeah, Sabrina. Uh, uh, do it. Uh, yeah. So, like, make, make an audacious decree. Do it right here, right now. I'd love to see what your audacious decree is right now for the Blue Galactic New Year. I'm going to get a little sip of water. If you have any other questions, too, guys, um, I've, I've pretty much covered it. I'm going to post this thing, though, this Samantha B, um, this clip. I'll post it on my, my, my page where her people, her like correspondents interviewed Olympic athletes to see how they're getting through quarantine. And you guys, I could have fucking said it. I could have said everything that they're talking about. They're talking about mindset. They're talking about keeping an upbeat idea. They're talking about what you ha have around you, right? So like if you're out and about and you're an empath and you don't have your mala and your crystals and like all this shit, how can you, how can you like recalibrate? Well, you have everything you need right here. I don't even use a pendulum. I can, I know that I can fucking deal with them. So I actually have this way that I like stand still and I ask the question and I feel which way my body wants to naturally start swinging. So if my body starts swinging right to left like this, then I know that it's a no. And if my body starts swinging front and back like this, then I know it's a yes. And unlike a pendulum that I can like more easily control, I can, I can tell if I start swinging and then I like, do something to force my way different um, so I know that I'm ch like cheating right I'm going to build a dragon camp for kids oh oh uh, Christina fuck yes I need to know about all these things and I yes oh yes yes make my first million dollars yes Aaron. now I my let me just let me just add a little something, Aaron. Uh, my definition of a millionaire is liquid assets of a million. You don't want to just make a million dollars and have to pay, you know, like 20 grand in taxes. So, so set it like my, make sure that intention is super clear. How to not be dreamed by others. I don't want to be an empath anymore. Oh, baby, no. Being an empath is amazing. First of all, you create a sieve, okay? So it's not a shield because when you shield yourself, you actually are not allowing for your energy to be released and for other good energy to be coming in. You have to make it like this sieve sort of situation. Like if you think about how osmosis works and things like that where like your cells are releasing some things in through certain valves and letting other things out through certain valves. So that's what you do. So you, you set the intention that you have this golden sieve around you and that any energy that is not in alignment with your highest vibrational frequency is immediately neutralized the second it hits the sieve and as it comes through the sieve it no longer is their energy the second it hits the, the sieve it's neutral energy and then as you pull it closer into you it becomes your energy for you to do whatever the fuck you want with so that's absolutely something that we can work on together is finding that vibration of okay this person's energy really gets me down what is it about their energy what is the texture of their energy what is the the feeling that i'm getting and then how can I change that sensation from a painful suffering sensation to a pleasurable orgasmic sensation? And when you do that, you've then now alchemized their heavy, dense energy that's in your field to a light energy that you can then go and create whatever the fuck you want with. Like, I, I understand being a fucking empath and not wanting to do it. I had fibromyalgia because I didn't know how to control my psychic gifts. I was just taking on the whole weight of the world and having no idea that that's what I was doing. So, oh, as I say that, everything's like popping and cracking. Oof. 
Yes, make my first liquid net million dollars. Uh, yeah, that's a solid intention. Okay, anybody else ready to decree their intentions for 20, 2016? Yes, let's make a million dollars as a base, then go for a hundred million dollars. Yes, that's so good. Love it. Okay, so I just want to review real quick. For those of you who jumped on, there's two other pieces. As always, we'll put these together and have them on YouTube for you. Follow the YouTube channel. I'll make sure I post the link up here too. Um, and Bespoke Dragon Invocations, I told you guys I'm going to be fixing the sales page to kind of reflect some of the things, but you you get the reading from the Dragon Oracle deck. We get You have a survey that's sent out to you beforehand that really like gets me in tune with your energy, explains where you're at so that you have a, a, a base marker so that you can see how you're changing over the course of time after you get your invocation. You receive a clearing, healing, activating vocal toning through the Pleiadian throat chakra technologies that um, are here. The soul frequency through my vocal cords. A lot of you guys have experienced the group one, so this is just your personal one. So it's your soul reflecting through my vocal cords back to you. and. Then you get that as a recording, so you get the whole session as a recording, you get the, the song, you can pull it out if you want. A lot of people like pull out just the singing part so they have just the clip in an audio file. You're welcome to do, like you can do whatever the fuck you want with it once you have it. Uh, there's a follow-up call two weeks later to see how you're doing. And then at the end of your protocol, because you'll receive a protocol as to how often to listen to the invocation after you get it to help integrate. Uh, you'll receive a survey at the end of that, depending on when that is, for you to to turn in and you'll, you'll be able to compare what your answers were at the beginning to the answers at the end. And these results are freaking phenomenal. So far, I haven't heard anything less than life-changing, which is pretty fucking awesome. So, Energetic Olympians, what do we do? One, we don't treat our spirituality and disciplines and being in alignment with Source as a hobby anymore it we eat it we breathe it we sleep it we it's constant it's a constant not a constant thought but the same way that an olympic athlete or any trained athlete is like eating their cereal and in their mind playing the game that's what we're doing we're constantly playing that game stop drop and alchemize second thing is that this is a dream so why not live whatever dream you want? You can choose the biggest, baddest, brightest, most brilliant, most audacious dream you want. Trillionaire, president, intergalactic emissary, the person who ends world hunger. Literally, it doesn't matter what you want to dream. You just have to decide that that's your dream. Three, it doesn't matter what other people think about your dream because as soon as your human existence ends all we all just a fucking peer so what we have to say about you and your craft and your sport and the way that you're presenting your gifts and the way that you're serving in the world don't listen use those use it use the triggers for your advantage use the triggers use them as fuel while the rest of them are getting bogged down and freaking out and getting into troll wars on your Instagram page, you can be using every single comment as a way to say, look at how amazing I am. I polarize in order to catalyze. I show, I shine a bright ass light on those shadows. And guess what? When you shine a light on the shadows, they get bigger, but eventually they disappear. And the fifth thing is to just follow it. Follow it no matter what. Do whatever it takes no matter what to keep these th four things in check. And you'll be a straight arrow. Straight, you'll walk into your future and you won't be surprised. If every single night you go to bed dreaming about the bar that you're going to walk into when you're going to meet the man of your dreams, you're not going to be surprised on the day that you walk into that bar and he's sitting there wearing that polo, drinking that drink because you created it because every single day you woke up and you saw it and you took the actions no matter how terrifying and you found the relationship coach and you worked through your limiting beliefs and you went through your past lives and you went through your childhood and you did the healings and the activations and you listened to the dragons and you did all of the things you won't be surprised when you walk into your fucking dream life the reason why people collapse when their life gets so big and amazing is because they are surprised. They are shocked. 
It's not this, oh my God, it's even better than I could have imagined. It's, oh, and all of a sudden they start checking their worthiness for it. Tom Brady knows that he's worthy of winning the Super Bowl because he works his ass off for it. So, when all you really are doing is staying in alignment and being happy, choosing happiness over sorrow, choosing love over hate and fear, choosing lessons over tests, I don't have tests from the universe. I have lessons from the universe. Tests give me this idea that I can somehow fail. I'm never failing. Mistakes help me learn and grow. That's it. The only time I fail is when I give up. Not give up today, but give up entirely. And I can tell you that that's not going to happen until the day that this mortal body takes its last breath. And even then I won't be giving up because I'll probably like turn into a dragon and just fucking fly away, right? <laughs> okay, I love it. My current partner, I don't want his anxiety beliefs. I just lit in his messages, vibe, masculine vibe that I use for my own board. Yeah. And you can even start getting that masculine vibe from yourself, right? Start creating the structure necessary to leave. Start taking those actions. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot easier to be realizing that you're using your own masculine force and you're not having to pull it from him, right? You, you take those terrifying actions, those injections from the masculine, your own divine masculine. So the fact that you're leaving him soon, I would just start asking your own guides, like, how do we expedite? Like, you've already made the decision. So start executing on the plan that's a huge thing a lot of us sit in the goo like we know what we're supposed to do but we don't do it just do the next right thing just take the next step literally turn on the song from frozen 2 <laughs> and just do it if you need to like just just step and then step again like if it's too hard to see all the way down to your dream like you're looking and you're like okay this is what i want i want to be president of the united states but it's too hard to see the road from here to there that's four years, guys. I couldn't even begin to tell you two years ago that I'd be doing what I'm doing right now. It's super hard for me to like, okay, President of the United States, President of the United States. But I have it so clearly as the end game that how I fucking get there literally doesn't matter. So while I have the vision up here, today I might do something that doesn't seem like it makes sense for that. Like the gymnasts who are found playing basketball, right? You see this all the time that Olympic athletes start doing other sports because there are like possible repetitive injuries going to happen or they need to learn like a little bit of a different skill that a different sport does for them. They take up chess even though they're a skier because they need to learn patience. Like that's why I tell you that I have a metaphysical toolbox. I don't have like a tried and true system. It's more like today, do you need a hammer? Or today, do you need a screwdriver? Today, do you need naked mirror mantras? Or today, do you need the what if game? Today, do you need me to hold you and love you with the compassion of Kuan Yin? Or today, do you need me to light a fire under your ass like Kali Ma? Yeah, running for office, 2024, President Karen Terrace. Hope I have your vote. Um. And if any of you guys know people in the political realm that like can help me, please send them my way because I'm definitely aware that I need to start getting the ball rolling on that. So I love you all. Thank you so much. Make sure you set your declarations. Like come back and comment your your intention, your new mo your new year resolution, your new galactic year resolution. Um, and I will also leave the link to a schedule for the Bespoke Dragon Invocations. I do have a couple openings still left this week. Next week, I'm going to be going out of town um, here in like a week or two. So there'll be like a little closed gap in my schedule. But don't worry, like you can still book out. Um, I'll be gone from the 5th to the 9th of August. So the 9th, we will um, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do for Sunday morning coffee with Karen that day because I will be on a retreat. So I love you. Have a beautiful day. Go out there and kick some ass like the energetic Olympian that you are. <laughs>